Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. It's been nine years since the tragedy uh, where 34 mine workers died and 78 others were injured at the hands of the South African Police Service while protesting for better wages. The widows of the Maragana massacre are still facing many challenges and need closure. For more, we have one of the attorneys representing the widows via Zoom, Asenati Tugela. Thank you so much for making the time to speak to us this morning. Thank you so much, Desiree, and um, thank you for having us today. Greetings to the listeners as well. We, we've just had a conversation with Advocate Dalim Bofu. Which component of the representation do you fall under? So I, um, I speak to you coming from the Socioeconomic Rights Institute of South Africa, uh, commonly known as SERI. So SERI represents the widows of the Marikana miners who were killed in, on the 13th and 16th of August in 2012. We represent the widows and their families. So that is the extent of our, our instructions in the matters. So over the years, stories have been covered of how the widows have to some extent been compensated. What is outstanding? So there's a lot of uncertainties and a lot of um, issues that are not clear in regards to the compensation of, of, of the families or the compensation generally of all the victims um, of Marikana. Um, it's, it's, it's quite infamous that the state is going to go out to the public and say that they have compensated so and so amounts of money. Uh, but when you break down, you realize that the compensation is far from being efficient and enough. Um, the state always announces that they have made compensation to the amount of 100 million so far, just in relation to Marigana and paying for the victims of Marigana. But if you break this down, you realize there is a lot of... Um, uncertainties to it. Um, of the 100 million, uh, it's compensation for the widows, their families, the injured and the arrested minors. So it's a group totaling close to hundreds or above hundreds of people who are claiming. Among the 34 families, the compensation that has been cleared so far is compensation regarding loss of support. And that's by its, its definition, you'll understand that it compensates for the extent of the support of the person who has been deceased. So different families come with different dynamics. Some families have uh, 10 dependents, some families have two dependents. So it's, it's important to break this down so that um, the public can be clear about the extent of this compensation. Um, to, make this, uh, to make an example on, 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 on the extent of this compensation, the least paid family among our clients was paid about 250,000 rands, and that is for loss of support, which ideally should cover for the entire period assumed that the, um, the, the, the deceased minor would have been alive to cover support for the family. So there's also a lot of uncertainty so, uh, towards this thing. Um, of the hundred and something million that they usually report about, about 70 million had to be divided among 320 claimants who are dependents of the deceased minors. And then the remaining figures were compensated to the injured and, injured and arrested. But we still contend that this is not enough, it's not sufficient to sustain and to restore our clients back to the ideal life that they lived before the murder and the killings of their loved ones and their husbands. So just in terms of the widows whose husbands died after the event, uh, because we are told that there are people, some of the people who were injured who then subsequently died, are they, how are they being recognized? Well, there's, there's very little recognition for all of, of the victims, um, speaking honestly. Um, there's very little recognition for the minors who were injured and arrested. There's little recognition for the, minor, for the, for the victims who are widows as a result of the killing of, 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 of the Margana, um, as a result of the killing in the Margana massacre. So it's always difficult to narrow down how conditions have changed for one person because it's always similar for the rest of... Um, our victim complement. So what's what's the way forward? Um, and I'll ask you a question I asked uh, Advocate Mbofi as well. What brief are your clients giving you nine years on? You know, we've been, we, 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 the clients have been following this matter interestingly and curiously for nine years. And throughout these nine years, they've held the same position that they hold today. They want justice uh, for the killings of their loved ones. They want transparency and they want the truth about the circumstances that resulted in the killing of their minors, of their, of their loved ones. Because the, 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 the sad reality about Marikana massacre is that a lot of information is still uh, hidden in the shelves 
a lot of information, a lot of information about the circumstances of, 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 the, of the massacre, the build-up, the actual massacre, what happened after, after the massacre is still um, not known. So um, chief among um, their demands is justice, truth, and accountability. And then after those are achieved, then the conversation will be primarily about compensation and restoring our clients back to the lives that they lived prior the massacre, prior the killing of their loved ones. So I think um, the position over the nine years has been about justice, and we haven't um, been, been, been accomplishing much, uh, but our clients, our families, um, the families of the, of the deceased minors, they still hold the same position, the position of justice and pursuing justice for the killing of their loved ones. And of course the concerns about government being non-responsive. Just in your operations and your overtures to government, have you, are you working well with government and are, are, you, are, you, are you getting any joy? Well, we, we, there's, there isn't much that we can trace and, and report back about to pride ourselves to say that this is the assistance that we've gotten from the government. Um, and, I, and I say this um, referring to every office in government. There hasn't been much um, assistance our, mind, our, our clients have received. There hasn't been much assistance um, in terms of social security and social support. Um, they, our, our, our clients are still indigent, uh, they are still poor, they are still struggling. They have, in fact, been forced to take up employment just to sustain and support the families. So there hasn't been um, much that we can come back and, and, and point at and say that this is what um, government's intervention has been and this is the extent of that government intervention. In so far as compensation, we don't have anything that the clients can pride about themselves about. In so far as justice is concerned, it's even more saddening because you find that over the last nine years, only two prostitutions have um, actually commenced. One has con concluded and the actual people who were charged, the police, were, 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 were not found guilty of anything. And the, now the one that's proceeding is not even in relation to the actual Maragana massacre. It's in relation to events before the massacre. It's in relation to events of the 13th of, Mas of, of August 2012. So I wouldn't say really there is, um, there is much to, to hold on to and say that this is the extent of the government intervention in so far as our clients are concerned. Are there any areas where the, you found that there is progress, uh, there is some sort of movement? I mean, it's, it, it would be unfortunate to not to acknowledge um, key role players uh, who have provided a lot of support for our clients who have been um, sympathetic to the cause of our clients. The mine itself has been quite sympathetic uh, to a certain extent uh, because even though the mine is now under a different ownership and under different corporate arrangements, um, Sibanya Steelwater still shows a bit of commitment towards um, the plight of the, of the victims of Margana. In so far as education for the deceased minor children, uh, the mine provides education, um, and so that's something we are really grateful for. Um, but it's just uh, bits and pieces, really, because, you know, uh, in the nine years we've been commemorating Maragana, we always see journalists gathered at Maragana, gathered at the Kopi, gathered at the hostels, and I'm sure you can make this assessment, too, that there hasn't been much that has changed on their side. The hostels are still the same, the labor um, and the working conditions are still the same, uh, the living conditions are still the same. So there hasn't been much that has changed, but it's always important to acknowledge uh, the little endeavors that key role players are doing um, in supporting the widows. Give us a sense of the work that Siri is doing in the interim, uh, just in terms of your interaction with other legal practitioners, your interactions with government, your interactions with Sibanya Stillwater, and maybe your yeah, interactions with the legal system. We, we have a good relationship with the... NPA prosecutors who are currently pursuing the criminal prosecution on the case. So we do, um, we are always on watching brief um, and following com with, with, with such great commitment um, on the matters. So I would say that with the prosecuting authority itself, we have a good relationship and that the minor, the, the, the families of the minors and themselves, they actually do feel the extent of the support that the NPA is providing. There are also other key role players. Um, IP is also a key role player through the NPA, um, but beyond that, really, um, it's always it's it's always necessary that I must um, mention how neglected the Madagara victims are, the injured and arrested, the families, everyone who's a victim of Madagana, they are an injured 
uh, segment of society. So we always appreciate those who work with us and um, showing some bit of sympathy towards the cause of the miners. But to a certain extent, um, or maybe particularly with, in terms of government, is we've been ignored um, so much over the last nine years. Yeah. Just give us an outline of the cases that are in the courts. Uh, can you tell us, uh, give us the details? So um, there is a current ongoing criminal prosecution at the Mabato High Court in Northwest. Um, it's in relation to events of the 13th of August. And that was about three days before the infamous Marikana massacre. So on the 13th of August, um, three minors died in the hands of the police. Um, Mr. Marty, Mr. Chokanisi, and Mr. Sokanile. So, so currently we are pursuing prosecutions for the death of those three minors. Um, hopefully in the next few months we'll be proceeding with prosecutions for the actual event of, of the 16th of August because we haven't seen uh, criminal prosecutions in relation to the actual massacre, which is the 16th of August. Everything else that has seen the face of the court has been in relation to other events building up towards the 16th of August. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And then much. perhaps if I may add, just okay, that, yes, that absolutely. there are also civil proceedings ongoing. That, that's a, a, a matter for another day. But thank you so much uh, for talking to us today. And uh, we really appreciate it. Asenati, Asenati Tugela is one of the attorneys representing widows of the Marigana massacre.